World Drum Club.
up my friends I don't know what I'm doing in that baseline welcome back to Tuesday Muse Day uh, I am Kalani your host and uh, curator does that mean I can cure you no it does not um, welcome let's keep playing we'll say hello in a minute thanks for being here everybody Okay, welcome again. All right, everybody. You know what? I just discovered yesterday uh, that I can put the comments up on my computer and I can make them huge so I can see them. Wow, what a luxury. Uh, I also have them down here, but let's say hello. And I apologize for, I turned my phone off, the volume off, but then and I turned the volume down. And then every time the show starts, uh, which, and I have my phone right here. Every time the show starts, I have... Uh, audio that comes out. Maybe I should just start using that in the uh, in the live looping. Well, welcome everybody. Uh, I will be talking about uh, what's happening here. The, today's theme is is melodic percussion, melodic playing. And so let's get into it right away. But actually, let's not. Let's say hello first. <laughs> welcome, Roseanne. Thanks for being our, our faithful moderator and host and keeping things going. Really appreciate it. Uh, and I see a lot of familiar, uh, well, I was going to say faces, but yeah, I'll say icons. You guys are all icons. Uh, Bill's here. Gwe I'm not going to get that name wrong. Uh, Mary is here. <laughs> I ducked that one. Mary, uh, Chris, Cornelius, hello. Uh, Alex is here. Welcome. Rebecca, Sue, Jean. 
Um, so I'm going to say this. Guadecola. Guade... Loca, yeah. Guadecola. Is that right? All right. That's the best I got right now. Yeah. I can't say, I can't say if that's an L or a T towards the end, but I'm doing the best I can, you guys. Um, Gene is here. If I didn't say it already, I pre appreciate you guys being here. Being here. Um, yeah, Bill, Cindy is here uh, from West Lafayette, Indiana. Awesome. That sounds very nice. West Lafayette. I'm in West Hills. There's no hills here. Well, there's there's hills nearby, which were on fire three years ago, <laughs> by the way. All right. Um, yeah, welcome everybody. Appreciate you being here. And today we're looking at melodic uh, percussion. So I dug out a drum I'm super excited about, um, which is my Balji Super Tumba, which my friend Brian keeps trying to pry from my hands. But uh, so far I'm holding out. I'll probably sell it to him someday. But check that out, you guys. Oh my God. That is nice. Uh, so that's the Valji Super Tumba, and then I've paired it, of course, with uh, the set of Tycoon Congas, which are these. But I've got it tuned. This one is tuned to a C. It's probably going to change, but... So I've got a C, an E flat, a G. And then i got the octave C up here. And that makes a C minor chord. Guess what I have here? That's right, an A flute. No, a C minor flute. So let's just check. Hopefully that all came across. The same. All right, and then maybe you're wondering what, but well, what about the other flute, the black flute? Well, this is a sneaky flute thing that we do sometimes. And what we do, what I was doing with this, is this is a G flute. And not to confuse anybody, I'm just gonna tell you that we have a thing when we play in this other mode called mode four. And what it does is if you take a, uh, a flute and you play in mode four, it, it has the same notes as a flute, a fourth up. And a fourth up from G is, that's right, C. So I can get the same notes on my G flute as essentially that I have on the C flute, but I have a higher range on the G flute because it's already higher. And then I have just different fingerings slightly. So instead of uh, playing the bottom note, I'm just playing. So I have a G, well, I can show you guys real quick. So my G is here. Instead of the, I mean, sorry, my C is here instead of the bottom, and then I've got a couple notes below that. All right, but that's too technical. You guys don't know that. You you don't need to know that. By the way, I just posted a video uh, for patrons on how to read a music chart. That's brand new today. I also posted a live looping video to the channel. In case you didn't see that, I it's not a live it's not a live stream, but it's live looping. And I was using hand pan and kalimba and all the a lot of the we play well together stuff. Um, so uh, those are two new videos right off the bat, beginning of May, and then we're here for I can't believe it's episode what is this twenty nine of Tuesday Muse Day. That's pretty cool. So we're hitting the ground running uh, in in the new month, and so yeah. So the idea is you can tune your congas. You know, congas are a melodic instrument. I mean, that's really the only reason you need more than one because you're playing all the same sounds. When you play congas, you're basically playing the same, you know, the same techniques. Bass, muted, tone, slap, whatever. And so the only reason you have more than one is so you have more notes, right? More pitches. And usually we, we would tune them maybe a fourth apart. Um, not always, but something like that. But in this case, I've got four, so why not just make a chord? And then uh, it took a little bit of tuning, right? So before this, I was I got my tuner out. I, I would hum, you know, the hum the note of the conga into the tuner because the tuner doesn't pick up conga notes really well. Kind of goes all over the place. I think because there's a lot of harmonics. 
But nevertheless, I mean, that one, that's beautiful. I could just sit here with this drum all day long. It's so warm. It's like a drum hug, sonic hug. Uh, and then I would tune it and then just, you know, up and down tuning the heads. So they're in tune now. Now these are probably gonna change because they're skin heads, they're, they're natural skin heads and, and they will tune with the uh, temperature and humidity and all that. So uh, don't be surprised if you tune your drums up, any drums, if it has a natural head and then you come back and it's like a different pitch later, that's okay. That's, I mean, it happens with every instrument really. All the string instruments, guitar players are constantly tuning. Um, and you know, vi string players, violin, cello, bass, uh, viola, we're always tuning, so no big deal there. All right, so I've got, um, oh, you guys are, you have a Indiana, sorry, I just read that Sue is also from Indiana. That's very nice, Michigan City. Now I've got to say, nothing against Michigan City. It doesn't sound quite as picturesque as West Lafayette. Maybe it is, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not, I'm just, I don't know. <laughs> All right. Do they call you, they call you Bongo Billy at your church, Bill? That is cool. They used to call me um, the Bongo guy when I was on the road with Yanni. They'd be like, hey, you're the Bongo guy. Yeah, I think I mentioned that before. I just wanted to have a t-shirt made that says Bongo guy. Um, oh, that's great, Sue. Five minutes from Lake Michigan. That's awesome. Yeah, I actually really, I've been to Michigan a few times. Great, awesome people, hard working. You guys get down. It's a nitty gritty state. Not like out here in California where we're all beach bums, right? Um, no, I'm being stereotypical, but kind of true. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna stop talking before I get myself into a hole that I can't dig out of. Uh, what else do we have going? We have some of the native tongue percussion instruments. I have um, over here on the side, I've got a little wood block that's attached, right, to the to the conga. And then over here, let's see if I can show it. I've got the bell, cowbell, also on a little cl clamp. And these are made uh, by the folks at Native Tongue Percussion. Thank you, and they sent me some. I'm, I'm using them. Uh, so we had the bell pattern and the clave and all that. It made it really easy to add those in, especially when you're live looping like I am right now. Um, all right, you guys, I'm excited. We gotta, we're going to keep moving. I'm excited to uh, go to the next feature of Tuesday Muse Day, which I think many of you are familiar with. But uh, in case you're not, here it is. Let's go. Yeah. Okay, guys, <laughs> are you ready? I'm only gonna give you, I'll give you two. I usually play three sounds, but I'm gonna, I think you guys are gonna get this. Um, so I'm gonna play a sound and just try to guess what it is. Put it, put your answer in the comments. Are you ready? Here we go. Here's one more. Sounds like, it sounds like that should not be happening. All right, what do you think? What do you think it is? Um, are you guys putting? Oh, there will be Q and A later, Cornelius, yeah. Uh, I know it is, there's a little delay on the uh, chat, so I'm just gonna wait a second. So go ahead and put your answer in the chat, we're waiting, we're waiting. Uh, I'm looking for an instrument name. Aha, all right, Alex got it. It's a low tuned cuica. It is a cuica. Um, and let me see, here it is, this one. I have a video on this, so I'm not going to do a lesson right now. Um, but yeah, uh, Bill, sometimes this is called monkey drum. Uh, it's called cuica in Brazil, I think outside of Brazil. Um, <laughs> sick rubber duck, Cornelius says. Yeah, so I'll just show you real quick. Uh, 
And uh, let me go to the side camera. Hopefully it's in tune. So you can see that it's it's metal. It's a metal drum. It has a head on the front. That's not unusual. But what is it unusual is it's got a stick inside. Can you see that in there? Oh, let me, let me get the camera. So there's a stick. And then on the stick, and I've just left it on there, is a is a rag or towel. I, I actually used a, a little sort of paper-like towel. And that's moist. It's got water. You soak water. Soak it with water. And then you reach inside there. I can't really show you too well, but you reach inside and you... It's a friction drum. So you, you get the stick in between the rag. And you're rubbing it. Just like your little straw. You know, when you get fast food and you're kind of hanging out and you just go... With the straw. Same kind of thing. All right, so let me go back to the main view. And then the way we get different pitches is we press on the head here with our finger. I'm not going to go crazy right now. I'm really out of practice. I'm not going to play a lot of Quika right now, but this is a uh, Quika. It's got a uh, Mylar head, which makes it easy, you know, to, to crank up a little bit. And then this this has been on here so many years, you guys. It's probably 30 years old. And it's just been on here, and I try to baby it, you know. Um, the nice thing about this particular drum, though, is that I can replace the stick because um, it's, it's a plastic stick. It's got a plastic screw end on it, so I can just take it out and screw another one on. Usually the, the stick is actually like in the head and it's wrapped around and then the whole thing is like one unit. So if the stick breaks, you've got to replace it. I do have a Contemporanea uh, Quica in, in there too. It's brass, it's big, it's heavy, and the stick is broken. So it's not making any sound other than if you wanted to play it like a little drum, I guess you could do that. So um, that's, and that was what, I think Lacey was asking for that. Is she here today? Um, I don't know. Somebody was asking for Quikas. So there you go. Ask and ye shall receive. Sounds of the monkey drum. So if you haven't already, watch the video um, I made on that and I show you a little bit more. I think I used that actual Quika. Um, but you can get those in different sizes. Brazilian music. Uh, it, is, it is from Brazil. Oh, Roseanne, I think, put the... There you go. See? So efficient. Put the link for the Quika video in the chat. So you can watch that if you want. Um, uh, yeah, so congratulations, uh, Alex, on getting that right away. It's, it's kind of a weird sound. And maybe the way I played it was even weirder. But th there you go. So there's Quika. Um, let's do Q&A right now so we don't run out of time. Uh, because I know Cornelius was asking. I'm happy to answer questions. I'd like to keep it somewhat on topic. So if you have any questions about Kind of the theme today, that'd be great if you can, or if you can bend your question into uh, the theme today so it connects with that, um, that'd be great. Think of your questions, put them in the chat. And in the meantime, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit as well. And I want to mention a few things. Um, actually, I'm going to play this video again, you guys, because this is the last week before Bloom. Bloom is Saturday, Sunday. And I know this is... Um, you know, most, most of you are interested in drumming. I mean, this is World Drum Club channel. However, you heard how beautiful the flutes are. And I've got to tell you guys, picking up the Native American style flute, it's basically a whistle. You don't have to make any fancy, you know, what they call armature, right? With your with blowing over a, 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 a lateral flute or even an edge blown flute. Like a lot of the, uh, what we call ethnic flutes or, you know, basic flutes or silver flutes. I mean, all, all kinds of flutes. Could, could require a little bit of technique, well, or a lot of technique, just to get a sound. Native American style flute's not like that. It's, um, the way it is these days is it's uh, fairly easy to get a nice tone. And then, you know, you've got six holes, five holes or six holes. And I gotta tell you guys, I, I started playing it maybe 20 years ago. And, you know, I came from drumming and I started playing the flute and it just has connected me with so many 
amazing people, communities, music. I use it as a music therapist. I use it in um, music education. I record with it. I just, I like having the melody voice as well as the rhythm. And look, I don't have to tell you that there is a long history and evidence of fife and drum, right? Flute and drum, flutes and drums together. From Kodo, the Japanese drumming group, there's a flute, they, they play flutes in there, to the Irish, you know, the Irish whistle with Baldrin, with Baldrin, uh, to even our, you know, you think about our like older military, like a snare drum with a flute, right? The, the, with the little American flag <laughs> or whatever country you happen to be in. You know, it, every, you know, this and, and West African drumming. Um, in fact, I did an interview on the channel with somebody who plays the, the, the lateral flute. Um, there's just a lot of drumming and fluting together. And they fit really well because the flute's in a higher frequency usually than the drums. And it's just nice to have a melody. So I encourage you to uh, get a flute and start playing it. And it's, what's nice too is you could take it anywhere. I started with a mid A, uh, which is a little smaller than the G I had earlier, the, the black one I had, a little smaller than that. They're, they're just super easy. Uh, some of you here I know are playing the Native American style flute. So we have an event coming up. Now this, was, this wouldn't be really for beginners. So if you're an absolute beginner, I would say it's not really for you. But uh, you're certainly welcome if you want to check it out. But I'm going to play this video again, and then we'll, we'll do some Q&A. Welcome to Bloom, a two-day online Native American style flute celebration. Bloom is about the spirit of motherhood, growth, abundance, and community. You'll learn six original songs over two days taught by our three passionate and talented flute artists, Suzanne Tang, Rana Yellowrobe, and Shelley Morningsong. No matter where you are along your flute journey, Bloom provides a fun and challenging musical opportunity for growth. Tickets are limited, so be sure to register soon to reserve your spot. Click the link below to find out more. We look forward to seeing you at Bloom. All right, you guys. Um, yeah, so if you want, come join us this weekend for Bloom. Questions, Cornelius, are you referring to this mic? This is an ATM 25 limited edition 20, 25 anniversary mic. It's basically a, like a bass drum mic. And I was just using it for my voice on the bass. Like this, one, two, one, two. Boom, doom, 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 doom. And I have, it, I have it EQ'd, so it's kind of for bass. So I'm, I'm trying to work on that, you know, sing bass. Uh, so that's Audio-Technica. And I use it for the bass kick drum. It works well on most drums, but it would be similar to the mics that, you know, a lot of people use for radio. There's those, there are those big, I think they're, what are those? I don't know. Those big fat mics that everybody likes to use for radio. And you see a lot of serious podcasters using them. Um, I forgot the brand of those. Maybe you guys know, but it's similar to that a little, a little bit different. Um, and Okay, Alex has a question. Can you do a video on how to change a djembe head? Uh, I think that is, I have a video on how to change a djembe head. I have to see if it's in the course or not, um, but I've done that. It was on a DVD that I made, um, and I think it was even on a video before that. It was like video material. Um, changing a djembe head is pretty involved. Um, I would steer you towards, mm, if you haven't done it, I would I would actually have your djembe head replaced by somebody who really knows what they're doing. If you wanna try though, uh, you could do it. It's a, you know, a lot of rope and finagling with the head. It's not, you know, it's not that difficult. It just takes a little bit of planning and knowledge. But um, I'll see if I can dig that up. But like I said, it, I shot that so long ago, I don't even know if I have it around or if I can even get it off of, like if it's on video, I don't even know how I would get that. 
And if I did, it would be tiny. It would be like 480. <laughs> you know, that would be so small uh, because now the resolution is so much better. But I'll, uh, if you want, contact me through Patreon or, or my website, and I'll see if I can connect you with a resource. Um, and then let me see. Let me back this up. Any other? What's a good native flute to get started? Cornelius asked. Um, I would recommend some of the basic flutes by, uh, let's see, John Norris is a good maker who makes some really affordable, nice sounding flutes. Uh, High Spirits Flutes is the one I started with. They, they've made some changes recently. I'm not sure what's happening over there. You can look at High Spirits. Um, one of my favorite flute makers, Brent Haynes, the guy that made this one, um, makes some, what he would, he would say are basic, you know, basic flutes, um, that are going to be kind of high caliber, but, um, really nice. Uh, you know, and then there is a native flute. There's groups on Facebook for that stuff. And you could go there also and put out the word, uh, I want a really popular builder right now is JP Gomez, but I think he's making like higher end stuff and he does hand carvings and things. So you just want a flute you can start on. I would check High Spirits um, and then maybe reach out to John Norris, you know, and if I'm forgetting anybody or if anybody has any other, I know Roseanne got some flutes, maybe you could put, I think Southern Cross, they're in Australia, but I think their flutes are nice kind of, you know, entry. Not, I'm not saying they're just entry level, but I think they have some flutes that might work for you in that regard. Uh, so you can look into that. Uh, so Cornelius is like, no, S is that SM7B? Is that what that is? Uh, I don't know. Uh, oh, okay. So, um, Rosanna saying Mulholland music. Yeah, Blue Bear flutes. Uh, I think he he's making all those flutes himself, right? I think. Oh, SM57. Yeah, I have some SM57s, and I have some Audio Technica mics that are similar to that. I have I don't use them too much because you really need to mic things close with those. So I use this one for bass drum stuff, but um, if I was miking up congas, um, like as in a setup, I'd probably use SM57s. Yeah, I just did a recording today. Uh, that tune that I made the how to read a music chart video, I used these mics up here, which are the Neumann, and I've got like a stereo pair kind of aimed, you know, across the drums. And I wanna see how they sound uh, on a recording. Probably not the first choice for Mike and Congas, but I think they sounded okay. They just get a lot of room sound because they're farther away. All right, uh, Rogan, are there any other common drums that would be considered melodic other than drum kit, multiple toms, for example? Um, you know, Darbuka, what we call doombecks, are pretty melodic. We don't usually play those in sets. Um, but they are uh, fairly melodic. Dun dunes are another type of drum that are double-headed drums that usually come with the uh, fur on them, on the skins. Those can be really melodic as well. A little bit more, a little bit harder to tune precisely, but if you can get them in tune, maybe spend a little time with it. And then if you play them with hands or soft mallets, they can be very melodic and warm sounding. Also the tan tan, uh, which I had a few weeks ago, Melodic, but again, we don't usually play those in a set. You know, we usually just have one of those. So similar to congas, um, Boogaraboo, that is a drum name, Boogaraboo, uh, which is kind of like congas-ish sounding. Now those are played in sets. Uh, so look that up. Uh, Boogaraboo, yeah, you see players like two or three or four Boogaraboos. Um, that would be another type of drum, like a conga drum that you could play uh, melodically, you know, in a set. Also, they're not, you can't really tune them, but I really like those, what they call Moroccan bongos, right? Those little clay, they're kind of touristy, but I had some, I don't know if I still do, I had some of those that were very melodic. They just, some of those are, because it's like a pot 
you know, pottery with a head on it. And for some reason, they're just very nice and resonant and warm. And so I used to use those. You just can't really tune them. But if you get a couple sets of those, maybe they'll just sound great together. You know, try them out. And Guadecola says uh, the Ka drum from Guadalupe is very melodic. All right, that's another one. Thank you for that. That's another one to look up. Um, any other questions? Oh, Northern Spirit. Okay, great. Yes. Um, Northern Spirit makes... I have one right here. Northern Spirit Flutes is um, Rich Dubay, and he has a bunch of flutes that he makes out of this um, food-grade ABS plastic, and they're good. I like them a lot. They're, they're just like a plastic flute, but these are great, actually. Thank you for reminding me of these. Um, this one is not an A, but maybe it is, actually. I don't know what key it's in. Yeah, it is an A. Really good choice for starter. And it's ABS, take it anywhere. You don't have to worry about it. All right, let's do a couple more questions. Um, what types of conga heads have the warmest sound? Uh, I would say, now this is a generalization, um, I would say that a calf head has the warmest sound out of the animal skin realm. Um, and that would include bison, which is, what is, which is water buffalo, Asian water buffalo, which is what you get on most of the imported factory-made drums, including these. Uh, tycoons, however, these tycoons, I, I, like, I think the heads sound really warm. But this uh, head, which is on the Valgi, is a, this is a cow skin. And you can kind of hear the difference. This skin is also about... I'm not even joking, you guys. This skin is almost 40 years old. Probably is 40, this skin, because I bought this drum used in 1983 or 84. Um, and look, listen to that. So it's got plenty of warmth. Um, so cow skin, but calf is a little softer. And then you've got steer, right, which is more of a bull kind of skin, the brown skins. Those are a little harder, so I don't think those would be as warm. And then you've got water buffalo, which are probably the least warm. Well, maybe in between cow and steer. And then you could get into synthetic heads. Um, the synthetic heads, some of them do have some warmth, but they also usually have a lot of harmonics and ringiness. So that may not be desirable. I... I tend to shy away from those for that reason because they have a lot of kind of overtones because of the plastic kind of makeup of those heads. However, I did used to have a set of the Evans conga heads and those seem to be engineered very precisely and they had some double layers of things and some coatings and those were pretty good, pretty warm, but not none of the plastic I think or the Mylar heads I think are as warm as natural heads. That's my opinion. So, but I would, I would start there. I would start with cow or calf um, as a kind of, if you want to get melodic skins. Now you do need to tune them because they're more sensitive to temperature and humidity. Everything's a trade-off, you guys, you know. Um, oh, Sue's asking, what's a monkey drum? Monkey drum is just another name for the cuica that I was playing earlier, that chrome drum. Oh, and Roseanne posted the link. All right, cool, you guys. Well, let's get into the Gimme Fiving. Last week we ran up, kind of ran out of time a little bit. I went a little late, but let's see if we can get that started in about four minutes uh, and do our, do our Gimme Five. So that's where you guys pick five instruments and I will live loop them. Now, today, 
the congas are taking up a lot of room. So I hope I hope you include congas <laughs> in as one of your instruments. That could just be one instrument, though, right? Congas are one instrument. I've got cajon down here, as always. We've got the cajon. Uh, if you'd like to, if you want to pick some of the instruments, I had shekere, right? The rattle. We've got cowbell, woodblock. I got some kashishi over here. We've got this cricket sound, which is great with reverb. And, you know, another block. I've got some bells over here. Anything, anything within reach, I'm happy to do. Uh, also, ukuleles, flutes. We could carry on the melodic theme of today. Although, so this is C minor. I, I, C minor is like the worst key you could play on the ukulele. It's really hard. Uh, it's possible, but it's not an easy key to play on the ukulele, but I could give it a shot if you want to have a ukulele. If you want to have a ukulele, then I need to go get one and tune it up, so. Um, but I'll, I'll wait a second for that. And in the meantime, if we can go back to a little of this. Why don't we do this and I'll play a little flute with it. Just the congas. Okay, that was your gimme fiving selecting background music. Um, that's another example of what you can do with a looper. Now there was some talk in our live stream from Sunday. Was it Sunday? Yeah. I did a live stream with uh, Jewel Adara from, uh, well, she's in New York and she works with the folks at weplaywelltogether.com. And Jewel and I did a live stream and she was, you know, kind of saying, hey, it would be nice if there was a looping course uh, because that's just another thing that you can do. Just, you know, you put in one thing, you loop one thing, and now you've got kind of a, a playing partner or practice partner. And what I like about this, of course, using a looper instead of using just loops that are already created, nothing wrong with that. Like I, I've practiced with GarageBand and I have an app, right? Um, what is it? The Pete Lockett app. Um, Groove uh, Jam, Groove Jam, Jam, what is it? Drum Jam. And uh, it's, they're awesome. It's great, great, no problem. But when you, when you have your own stuff that you can loop and you have a looper, then you, like I created this C minor, you know, conga thing, and then I can play my C minor flute along with it, and it's perfect. And then this looper happens to have a lot of effects, so I just need a mic, and now I've got reverb, I've got other effects that I can add. So it just kind of ups the, the game a little bit, which at the end of the day, it's about music making, and it just gives you kind of more options that you can use. Um, it also helps you sound better when you have some effects and good equipment. So I enjoy it, I like it. Um, if you guys want to see a looping 
a course, let me know and see and shoot me a message over on Patreon. By the way, before we do the Gimme Five, um, I think I have a slide about that. Yes, at Patreon, I am going to encourage you guys to become a patron if you're not. Now over there, we've got lessons, of course, that are not free on YouTube. We've got full courses. You do need to be at the courses tier. Still super cheap, though, when you compare it to other things, similar things. Facebook group, and that's a way you can support music education. Uh, Welcome to Bloom. Hold on. A two day. Hold on. Let's go back. <laughs> I don't know how to operate the buttons quite. So, um, yeah, you know, this is a music education channel, basically. And, of course, we do more than that. It's entertainment. It's music. It's facilitation. And it's about, you know, more than just learning, like, rhythms. Uh, nothing against that either. It's great to just learn stuff. But, you know, I, I think you guys can see that we're doing a little bit more than that. Over here on World Drum Club and on the Patreon side, patreon.com slash Kalani. Um, so, yes. Let's go. So, uh, Roseanne, do you have a, did I miss it? Or is there a, give me five. So let me know. Roseanne's going to pick somebody. You, you know, Roseanne, you can also pick somebody to pick somebody. Because as the picker of somebody, you have that option. In case you want to exercise it, you can at any time. Uh, you can, you can uh, also delegate. Oh, and real quick, you guys, while that's happening, I'm glad I put this over here. I wanted to mention this book. Now, this guy gave me this book at the NAMM show, and I will do a little bit more on this, but I just want to give a shout out real quick uh, to Matt Phil uh, Philipson, Matt Philip Philipson, and he did this book called The Cajon Book, and he, he gave it to me, and it's incredible. It, it just like has so much in it. Um, rhythms, beautiful color photos. Look at him jamming there. Um, it comes with, I guess that's a DVD or enhanced CD or something. It's just, there's so much in here. It's like, it's just beefy and beautiful. It's published by Alfred. Yeah, lots of uh, pictures. And I'm just super impressed with this book. So I haven't gotten a chance to really get into it yet, but... Anyway, I just wanted to give him a shout out because he, he was really nice, gave me a copy. There he is, half of him. And uh, there's just so much in here. So if you really, if you want to dig into Cajon, then um, yeah, consider getting Cajon book. Uh, it says 65 online videos. I mean, that's crazy, right? That's competing with World Drum Club. <laughs> We're here to, prom to promote, all right, you guys? So check it out, Cajon Book, Alfred Publishing. Okay, I'm going to look down. And Roseanne, <laughs> Roseanne doesn't want to give up her power, but she's selecting Alex. All right, cool. Cajon, Shikare, Bongos, Native Flute and Cowbell. All right, no congas. All right, that's okay. It's your choice. Um, all right, so Cajon Shikade. Let me get some, make some room here. And I guess I can play any of the native flutes. So let me grab, uh, you know what? The, and the bongos, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how those are tuned right now. Let me grab them. Stand by. Stand by while our team resets the equipment. All right. Okay, let's see. Yeah, that'll work. All right, so we have Shikare, Cajon, Bongo's Native Flute Cowbell. All right, and then let me get, since you asked for cowbell, let's bring out the big guns today. <laughs> let's just go, look at this cowbell, you guys. How about that? That's a nice cowbell right there. I think this is a handmade 
Uh, I'm not gonna play it until I turn my mic down, but that's a nice bell. So for Alex, all right. Cajon, cowbell, shake it a, bongos, flute. All right. I'm feeling kind of like, oh, you know what? I'll play the Northern Spirits flute. How about that? Just because I mentioned it earlier. All right, I'm gonna clear out the looper and we're gonna get going here in a, in a second. And let me see. We'll take it up a little, uh, a little faster. All right, let's go. Anything else before we get started? Everybody's into the cowbell. <laughs> yes, all of my staff are on break right now. So it's just me. What a surprise. All right. By the way, I designed these sticks for Vic Firth. They don't make them anymore, unfortunately, but these are great for just playing cowbell or something. Little wooden stick. It's a half a timbali stick but they were colored in four different colors. Uh, and I would use them for drum circle stuff and games and everything. All right, let's go, you guys. Uh, here we go. Stand by.
All right, you guys. Hey, I want to thank you guys for、uh, joining today for Tuesday Muse Day. I'm wrapping up a little bit early so we can all say our goodbyes. Sometimes it's kind of rushed at the end. So,、um, just a reminder join us for Bloom. Become a patron if you're not already. We really appreciate that. We are community supported. A lot of the people here in the chat who show up every week、uh, are patrons and support the channel at the courses tier. Maybe you've been wanting to improve and get lessons and things, and you can get a lot of stuff、uh, all in one place by becoming a patron at the courses tier. Ukulele, full course. Native flute, full course. Congas, djembe, bongos, cajon, facilitation, drum circle, music games, all included. It's crazy. I don't know what I'm doing. Why am I giving away so much? Because <laughs> I appreciate you guys. All right, I'm gonna play a little bit more, but thanks for joining, and we'll see you all soon.